This isn't just your average celebrity breakup story. It's full of scandal, cheating, and even a violent fist fight. Francho Tone was more than just a Hollywood star. He was the epitome of classic masculinity, gracing the silver screen with his chiselled jawline and debonair demeanour. He captured the hearts of audiences everywhere with his performances alongside the leading ladies of the era, leaving them swooning over his charm and wit. From his tumultuous love affairs to his infamous fist fight, you will get to know everything about him in this video. So let me take you on a journey through the life of an actor who worked tirelessly to perfect his craft and rise to fame, but couldn't escape the shocking scandal. Francho Tone's story is one of hard work, dedication, and the thrill of the spotlight. He was a true Hollywood icon known for his incredible acting skills and captivating personality. He rose to fame in the 1935 classic Mutiny on the Bounty, starring alongside Hollywood legends like Clark Gable and Charles Lawton. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Francho was a force to be reckoned with in the entertainment industry, and his journey to the top was nothing short of amazing. Francho was born into a well-to-do family in Niagara Falls, New York, but he didn't just sit back and relax on his family's wealth. Instead, he chased his passion for acting and worked hard to carve his own path in the world of entertainment. After graduating from the Hill School and studying at Cornell University, he discovered his love for the dramatic arts and became the president of the drama club. He even headed to France to study, but he was destined to walk the boards. Francho started his acting career in Buffalo, New York, working on his skills with the McGarry Players Stock Company. He then headed to Greenwich Village, where he made his professional New York stage debut in The Belt. But that was just the beginning. If you're a fan of theatre, you may have seen Tone's incredible performances in popular Broadway productions like The Age of Innocence and Hope for the Best. He was a true star on the stage, and audiences were always left mesmerised by his performances. Francho's talent was undeniable, and it wasn't long before Hollywood came knocking on his door. Tone's first appearance on the big screen was in The Wiser Sex in 1932, co-starring the lovely Claudette Colbert. His scenes had to be shot during the day, as he was still performing in the theatre at night. What a dedication! MGM, one of the top studios in Hollywood, offered Francho a movie contract, and his journey to the silver screen began. Today we live. The movie didn't do well at the box office, but it was really important for Tone. Why? Because there's where he met the stunning Joan Crawford. This encounter initiated a whole new story, a quite interesting story. He danced his way into the hearts of viewers in Dancing Lady alongside Joan Crawford, and their love only thrived. Crawford was coming out of a marriage to Douglas Fairbanks Jr., and despite worrying it was far too soon for romance, Crawford fell in love with Tone. However, things soon took a turn for the worse when Tone began filming with Betty Davis, and rumours of a romance between the two started to circulate. In a bid to keep her man, Crawford proposed to Tone, and the two were married in 1935. They went on to star in seven films together, but unfortunately their marriage was far from perfect. Crawford desperately wanted children, but suffered two tragic miscarriages, which led Tone to turn to alcohol, and according to Crawford, he even became physically abusive towards her. The marriage ended in 1939, with Crawford citing extreme cruelty as the reason for their divorce. Tone took the divorce hard, but Tone wasn't down for long. He soon fell in love with a younger model-turned-actress, Jean Wallace. Despite their twenty-year age difference, the two had a happy marriage and even had two sons together. At least that's what they showed to the world. They proudly talked about their two sons and each other's best traits in fan magazines, and looked relaxed and in love in photographs. But unfortunately things weren't meant to last. Their relationship began to deteriorate, and they eventually went their separate ways. Wondering where his career led amidst all this chaos? Certainly his personal life was rocky, but he was not the man to give up on his career. Meanwhile he was rocking his natural charm on television, bringing his unique style and talent to every role he played. In 1950, Tone made his first television appearance on the Philco Goodyear television playhouse series, 
and from then on he became a regular face on some of the most prestigious drama series of the time. You name it, Studio One in Hollywood, General Electric Theatre and Playhouse 90. Tone was there, giving us some unforgettable performances. But that's not all. He also made appearances on some thrilling episodic adventure series like Bonanza, Ben Casey, Wagon Train and The Alfred Hitchcock Hour. Can you imagine a 45-year-old man still dazzling the world with his acting skill? But no, it was not just about acting. Even at this age, he was a true Hollywood heartthrob. With his smouldering good looks and undeniable charm, it's no wonder that he captured the hearts of so many leading ladies. Despite the ups and downs of his love life, he was once again ready to fall in love. Was it going to be perfect this time? Well, his next affair actually turned into something unpredictable. When he had just ended his marriage to Jean Wallace and was ready to embrace the single life, one fateful night in 1950 he sauntered into a popular nightclub and locked eyes with a young starlet named Barbara Payton. Little did he know this chance encounter would ignite a fiery and tumultuous romance that would make headlines for years to come. Now Francho was no spring chicken. He was a mature 45, while Barbara was a vivacious and daring 22-year-old. She had already made a name for herself in Tinseltown, sharing the screen with the likes of James Cagney and Gregory Peck. But she also had a reputation for being a bit of a wild child, which made Francho's friends warn him about the dangers of falling for her. But Francho was a man in love, and he couldn't resist Barbara's daring spirit and edgy style. She rocked temporary face tattoos and pink hair dye, which was practically scandalous back in the 1950s. Francho was smitten with her, but he also felt the need to improve her, introducing her to the finer things in life, like expensive jewellery and fur coats. He even took her to meet the creme de la creme of society, hoping to mould her into his idea of the perfect lady. Barbara, on the other hand, was happy to play along with Francho's guidance. She affectionately called him Doc and cooked for him, basking in his attention and affection. The two of them were inseparable and enjoyed making public appearances together. Francho, who usually shied away from the spotlight, was suddenly all over the news with his new girlfriend by his side. Their whirlwind romance took them all over the country, from the premiere of Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye to a key to the city presentation in Miami. Francho even paid for an apartment for Barbara on Hollywood Boulevard, and the two of them got engaged in October of 1950. Doesn't it look like a fairy tale? But unfortunately it was a tale of cheating, addiction and tragedy that would end in a way that nobody could have predicted. Barbara's career and her relationship with Francho seemed to be going smoothly, but the problem started when Francho heard rumours that his fiancée was being unfaithful with her co-stars. In a move that was both bold and invasive, he hired a private detective to follow her around and caught her in the act with actor Guy Madison. Despite this, Francho remained committed to their engagement, but things only got worse from there. While Francho was in New York for work, Barbara stayed behind to film her latest movie, Bride of the Gorilla, and, unfortunately true to form, Barbara began an affair with ex-boxer and actor Tom Neal, all while engaged to Francho. To make matters worse, Barbara had moved Tom into her apartment, which Francho was paying for, and even told friends she was engaged to him. When a friend expressed concern about Francho, Barbara dismissed it with a flippant explanation that she'll deal with that later. The situation came to a head when Francho and Tom got into a fist fight, leaving Francho hospitalised for almost a week. Barbara and Tom even planned to get married, but it was not to be. So how did it all start? Barbara borrowed Tom's car and drove into Hollywood to meet Francho. That afternoon, while Tom waited at her house, Barbara phoned her maid and asked that she send her mink coat to the Beverly Hills Hotel, where Francho was staying. That evening, she and Francho went out to several nightclubs, but when they returned to her home around 1.30am, Tom and several other people were drinking and waiting for them. Barbara asked Tom to leave, but when he refused, she turned to Francho and said, Get rid of him. Tom claimed that Francho asked him to step outside to fight, 
but he counseled him to reconsider because of the difference in their ages, weights, and fighting skills. However, Tom said that Francho responded with a wild right haymaker, which he easily ducked and countered with several punches that left Francho on the ground and bleeding. When Barbara ran out and rushed Tom, he pushed her out of the way, but Barbara and other witnesses told a different story. They claimed that Francho never raised a fist and that once the two men walked outside, Tom slugged Francho in the face with such force that he was lifted off his feet, flew ten feet through the air and landed on his back on the steps. Tom continued to punch Francho in the head even after he was down, and when Barbara ran out to stop him, he punched her in the face and threw her into the bushes. Francho suffered a broken nose, fractured cheek and brain concussion, and was in and out of a coma for ten days. Tom suffered only scraped knuckles. The wedding plans between Barbara and Tom were off, but surprisingly the wedding plans between Barbara and Francho were back on. Barbara announced to the press with a black eye hidden behind sunglasses that Francho had proposed to her from his hospital bed. They got married at the home of one of Barbara's aunts, but their marriage only lasted eight months. She and Francho divorced in May 1952. The scandal effectively ended Barbara and Tom's Hollywood careers. She lost custody of her nine-year-old. Her life continued on a roll downhill, picking up detritus and toxins and arrests for passing bad checks along the way. Eventually, she died in 1967 at the age of 39. If you are thinking that Francho was affected the same way by this scandal, then you are wrong. He went on to continue his career in movies, television and on stage, though his movie career began to wind down after 1950. He decided to return to his first love, the theatre. In 1957, he co-starred with Wendy Hiller and Cyril Cusack in Eugene O'Neill's A Moon for the Misbegotten, and the same year he starred in and co-produced and co-directed an adaptation of Chekhov's Uncle Vanya. But you know what they say, old habits die hard. So during the 1960s, Tone made occasional appearances back on the big screen in some memorable character roles. In 1962, he played the President of the United States in Preminger's Advise and Consent, and in 1965 he played a menacing nightclub owner in the surreal drama Mickey One. But yes, not before his final marriage again. No, this time it was brief and less dramatic. His final marriage was to Dolores Dawn, an actress who stole his heart in 1956. Unfortunately, their love story was short-lived, and the couple parted ways after three years. Despite the disappointment of divorce, Francho remained a hopeless romantic, always searching for that one special connection. In his later years, Francho's health declined, and he became wheelchair-bound due to lung cancer. His love life may have been tumultuous, but he was blessed with true friends who stood by his side until the end. One of them was his first wife, Joan Crawford, who provided him with care and support during his final days. Surprised? Well, sometimes the most unexpected people turn out to be our real friends. Their relationship had gone through its ups and downs, but in the end it was a testament to their enduring love and respect for one another. On September the 18th, 1968, Francho Tone passed away in New York, leaving behind a legacy that still captivates audiences to this day. Francho Tone's life was a roller coaster of emotions, filled with love, heartbreak and unexpected turns, but through it all he remained a charming and charismatic man, who captured the hearts of many, and didn't let anything stop him to shine. In our next video, we'll delve into the life of another silver screen sensation, Elizabeth Montgomery. You won't want to miss how this iconic actress found herself in one of the most shocking marital twists of all time.